us in the power of your words. Amen. I just want to greet everyone this morning in the name of Jesus. I want to greet our online family and just welcome you into this atmosphere of glory. Amen. I pray that this anointing that's upon this land this morning will go into your homes and transform your hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to have you. Just remember we are having our communion service this morning. So just prepare yourself. Go get your communion things together as we'll take communion after the service. I just want to say before I start to the message, there are prayer cards that the ushers have got, blue prayer cards. Uh, if you need to fill in a prayer request, which you can put into the offering basket, you just lift up your hand right now and the ushers will give you a card. Um, and then you can fill in your prayer request during the service. And when the offering baskets come around, just drop it in. These prayers only Pastor Rishen and I will look at and pray. Amen. You online, if you have a prayer request, you just send it to Kibler Park at joyministries.co.za and we will get praying for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. It is awesome to be in the presence of God this morning. Amen. We must never forget the faithfulness of God. And His presence reminds us of His faithfulness. Hallelujah. If you need a prayer card, just lift your hands up. Someone will come to you now. Just keep it up until they come to you while we continue. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you guys for the awesome worship this morning. Amen. There's nothing like anointed worship. Amen. There's a difference between talented worship and anointed worship. Hallelujah. I want to I wanna speak to you this morning on the faithfulness of God. I want to speak to you not on God's faithfulness because God is faithful. You see, we always want to speak of the faithfulness of God, but it's given. God is faithful. He will never change. He's not a man that he can lie. But the problem lies with the faithfulness of his people who doubt his faithfulness. Amen. And so I want to turn your attention to the book of um, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Remember, God says in his word <coughs> that he will never leave us and never forsake us. Amen. So this morning I want to speak to you on your consistency of your faith. There must be a consistency in your faith. You can't trust God today and tomorrow doubt Him. You will never achieve what God has for you. Amen. So I want to turn your attention to the power of our God. I want you to know this morning that we are serving a mighty God. We are not serving... You know what? I was just about to say with all due respect and talk about everyone else who they serve in, but I don't need to make excuses we don't serve idols. We don't serve gods just for names. We serve a living God. I want to tell you something. There are people in this world. The Bible, the, the, I read the post that it says that the Muslim pray five times a day. And yet they're praying to a God that cannot answer them. They're praying to a statue. They're praying to a, a mythical thing. But we are praying to a real God. Where is our consistency? Where is our prayers? Consistency in your faith means that you will turn to your God at every given time. Amen. And I want to speak to you on this this morning because God is speaking to me about what is coming upon the earth. And the next three months are very important. And if you look in a prophetic eye into the seasons that stand before us, I believe the next three months are very important. Hallelujah. Don't be fooled by the stillness of the next three months or a few months. You notice that everything has been quietened down all of a sudden. But I believe that we need to be vigilant in this time. So the Bible speaks in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Therefore know that the Lord your God is good. The faithful God who keeps His covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. This is the God that we serve. A God that is not just faithful to you. He's faithful to your children. He's faithful to your children's children until the earth exists. If you will love him, 
And if you will keep his commandments, the Bible says that this God, he's not a normal God, he's a faithful God. You must understand the nature and the mind of our God that we are serving today. His name is Jehovah El Shaddai, he's the almighty God. And the Bible says down to a thousand generations, his faithfulness will last. Why then do we doubt his faithfulness in our lifetime? Why then do we doubt him in the storm? We, we sung that song this morning. He is the God of the mountain and he is the God of the valley. Hallelujah. We must get a revelation. We must understand the faithfulness of our God. If you look through the pages of the Bible, the one plague that followed the Israelites was inconsistency of their faith. You see, it's one thing to believe God and it, for a season. It's another thing to be consistent in your faith. You see, they trusted God in Egypt. When God, when they saw the mighty signs of God and they saw Pharaoh come and bow before God and they saw how God planted the riches of Egypt and gave it unto them at the command of His voice and they trusted Him and they believed Him. But that faith was short-lived. A few days later, they found themselves at the Red Sea. And their faith was not consistent at the Red Sea. They doubted God again. And throughout the history of the Israelites, you find the people that were inconsistent on their faith. And that was the plague that, that caused them to lose the promised land. Throughout the desert, you'll find God was faithful. God was always there. Whenever they, whenever they chose God again, whenever they overcame the inconsistency in their faith, God was there. He was always there. Whenever they turned to Him, He was there. And I want you to know today, don't you ever be inconsistent on your faith towards this God. Because He is always there. He will be there for you. He will be there for your children and your children's children. If you will love Him and if you will keep His commandment. All He asks is that you love Him with all that you are. With every breath that you breathe. That's all He asks. If you will trust Him. If you will believe Him. And He is a faithful God. He is faithful in every area of your life. We must have consistency in our faith. If we are going to possess what God has for us. Even in a time such as this, I always tell you, even in this season, God is consistent. Therefore, your faith needs to be consistent. He's not going to tell you that He loves you, tell you that He'll protect you, and suddenly a virus and a pandemic comes in the world and God forgotten about you. No. Or suddenly you go through a difficult situation and God has forgotten His promise. No. His word is faithful and is true. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that God is faithful and He will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you can overcome. So whatever you are going through today, God has given you the ability to overcome it. And if you do not have the ability to overcome it, God will step in. The reason that God is not stepping in, He wants you to do something. You have the ability, but He will never allow you to perish if you will trust Him. That is the faithfulness of God. God didn't promise us. And many times I've, I've mentioned this to you all that God has never promised us a life that was without storms. But He promised us an overcoming life. Hallelujah. It calls for consistency. If you read in the book of Judges, you read throughout the book of Judges, the people of Israel, they believe God. It tells me a story of an inconsistent nation towards their belief in their God. Because the Bible says that he raised up a judge to d deliver them. And great plunders came into their lives. A couple of storms come and they got inconsistent. And they started to turn from their God. And they started to, to turn to the bowels and turn to idolatry. And God stood back. And whenever they turned to him again, he came back to them. And it was a, a repeat, a repeat, re repeating of this over and over again. And it was the demise of Israel. I want to tell you something. Israel did not fall and go into Babylon because God has deserted his people. God will never desert us. Israel fell and went into captivity into Babylon because of their inconsistent faith. When they went through the storm, they forgot that he's the God of the valley. 
This is what David said. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He had a revelation. He had a consistent faith. When Saul was chasing him, he believed God. The disciples had a consistent faith. Whether they found themselves in persecution, they believed God. When the Pharisees came to uh, Peter and John and said, I don't want you to speak in the name of Jesus. Even in that day, they said, but we cannot but speak in this name because we've seen too much. We've tasted too much of this God. The Pharisees said, just deny your Jesus. But the, fair, the, the disciples said, we cannot, you do what you want to do, but we cannot deny this God. We have tasted too much of him. We know that he is faithful. We are consistent in our faith. We are consistent in our belief. We need to be a consistent people. In this day I hear the Lord say, we need to be a people that our faith is unmovable and unshakable in the things of God. Because our God said that he will never leave us. And the disciples said that we cannot but speak in the name of Jesus. I tell you there will come days in the future where the name of Jesus will be persecuted. Hear the voice and the spirit of God this morning. There will come a time in the near future where the name of Jesus will become a, a thorn in the side of many. It will become a bad thing. People will not want to hear the name of Jesus. In that day, will you be consistent? God is asking you today, will you trust me in the storm? Do you not trust my word? Do you not believe that I am the God that will bless you down to a thousand generations? We live in difficult times. It has come to our doorstep in this generation. There are nations that have lived in this season for many, many, many decades. If you go to Nepal and if you preach the gospel, they'll crucify you on a cross. They'll burn you on a cross. they are preachers that have been nailed to a cross and burnt in Nepal. There are nations in this world where you need a consistency of our faith. But we, part of the Western world, we have forgotten that consistency. We have found ourselves in a place of complacency. But God is calling back his people to that place. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Judges chapter 2. It says after, after Joshua and after all of that generation that has come into the promised land. There rose a generation that did not believe in the God and the plunders of the God of Israel. Be it far from us. If we are not consistent, mothers and fathers. Even the children that are sitting here. If we are not consistent in the promises of God. If our faith is subject to the blessings around us. Our children. There will rise a generation that will forget our God. Your children must know the God of their father. And the God of their mother. They must know the faithfulness of the God of their grandmother and their grandfather. And the only way our children will know. If we will stand. And if we will tell them. consistent. 
existent in this day. Because otherwise there will rise a generation that will not remember the God that we serve. And it's not God. You must understand it is not God. The Bible says that He is faithful. I want you to, as I mentioned earlier, Israel did not fall because God put His hand or uh, took His hand off them. No. It's because they turned to the Baals and they turned to the idolatry of the, of the people around them. They were not consistent in their God. God is calling us to be consistent. Let's look to the book of uh, Joshua. Or let's go to Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8. A lot of people speak of the joy of the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord is our strength. But I want to tell you something. There's a secret to that joy. And if we read, let's go a little earlier into the chapter from verse 8. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. So they read distinctly. It's a time when Nehemiah built the walls of, of the city again. And, um, and they came. When they built up the walls of the city, they brought the priest, brought the book of the Lord, the book of the Lord, the Bible. And they started to read to the people. And then I pick it up from there, from verse 8. So they read distinctly from the book, the law of God. And they gave the, the sense and helped them understand the reading of the word. And Nehemiah, who was the governor in Israel, the priest and the scribe and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord God. Do not mourn nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then they ate the fat and drink to sweet and sent portions of fat to whom, whom nothing is prepared. For this is a holy day. Do not, do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You see there was a story before that verse. And it tells us of a people that has had an inconsistent faith. And they doubted their God. And they were taken. And their city was plundered. And now God has spoken to the prophet Nehemiah. And he said, come and rebuild my city. And when he rebuilt the city, he started to read the word of God to them. And the Bible says, the reason why he told them that the joy of the Lord is their strength is because the people started to weep. Why did the people start to weep? Because when they heard the promises of God, they realize what have we done? We doubted a God that is faithful. When you read the word of God, you will learn his faithfulness. When the word of God is read in your home, when the word of God abides in your heart, you will remember the faithfulness of your God. You will be a consistent person. Your faith will be consistent. You will never doubt him because the word abides in your heart. And when he read the word, the people started to cry. They started to weep and they realized, but we are so foolish. If we could only trust our God, if we could only believe our God. And today I say to you, let us not be those people. Let us believe the God of 2019 is the God of 2020. Whatever this world can throw at you, His faithfulness will stand strong. Yes, you may go through some storms. Yes, you may face some difficult things, maybe loss in your life. Maybe loved ones around you will go home to be with the Lord. But that does not mean that God's faithfulness in your life is taken away. Because God's faithfulness is not attached to our emotions. Even in your storm, God is faithful. Even when your lost ones are taken from you, God is faithful. It doesn't mean that you lose someone or you lose a business and you lose a house and you lose a car that God's faithfulness suddenly has gone. God's faithfulness is greater than the blessings of this world. If you look in your child today, if you look in your, in your children's lives, you will see the faithfulness of God. You may have lost things of the flesh. You may have lost people around you. But if you see who's before you, you will see the faithfulness of God. I believe one day we will see, we will see all the loved ones that we have lost. One day we will see and we will taste the goodness of God 
that is greater than what the earth has ever promised us. The, the Bible says that to those that have lost, much more will be given unto them. The faithfulness of God is greater than the treasures of this world. And if you line it up to the treasures of this world, you're going to doubt God. Your faith is going to be inconsistent because it's going to be subject to blessings, isn't that so? And so, in the book of Nehemiah, he says that the word had the power to convict them. The word of God will remind you of the faithfulness of God. Let's look at what the word has to say about our God. If we look at the book of um, Psalms 119 verse 90, it says, Your faithfulness endures to all generation. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 says, the Lord is faithful who will establish you and keep you from the evil one. The word of God speaks and shouts of the faithfulness of God. Wherever you look, you see the faithfulness of God. And the more we read his word, the more we believe in his word, the more consistent our faith will become. I want you to know that God is calling a consistent people. Because I want to tell you something, even in the valley, even in your need, God is there and God is going to come through for you. Every great man and every great story of faith that we read in the Bible, every great story of the plunders of God's people, it was birthed in a man and a woman that was consistent in their faith. There's no difference. When you read of um, Peter walking and the, his shadow was healing people. Was it not the same God of Peter that is your God today? What was the difference? He was consistent. It didn't matter what he got and what he lost. He believed God. It didn't matter whether he was in need. He believed God. It didn't matter whether he lost. He believed God. It didn't matter whether he got whooped. Because of his faith, he believed God. And that consistent faith brought forth the miracles and the great blunders that we read in the Bible. When we read of men like Daniel and Meshach and Abednego and Shadrach, all these guys that we like to talk about, what caused them to walk in the lion's den? It was the, the, the consistency of their faith. It didn't matter. Whether the, the, when you read the story of Meshach and Abednego and Shadrach, when they came to the king, the king said, just do what I'm telling you. And you won't go in the, into the furnace. And they said something faithful and powerful. They said that even if you, if we go into that furnace, God will protect us. But even though he wouldn't protect us, we will still not do what you want us to do. That's the kind of consistency that will birth the miracles of God in your life. These stories of the Bible can be your stories. The stories of the Bible is for everyone. But you must allow yourself to be consistent in your faith. These men and women of God that we hear of the great plunders of God in their life. were men and women of God that was willing to die for their God. They believed him to death. They believed him to the cross. They believed him when they had plenty. And they believed him when they were in lack. They believed him when they lost. And they believed him when they received the plunders of God. They, they just told the king, you know what? We trust this God. You do whatever you want. Send us into this uh, furnace. There will come seasons in your life. Where you will be facing the furnace. Will you be consistent in that day? That's where, the, that's what counts. It means nothing to trust God when you're blessed. What counts and what births miracles in our life, what builds our faith is our consistency in the difficult seasons. And because they were consistent, God came and walked among them in the furnace. And I tell you something, my brothers and sisters, if we are consistent 
in this season. Though many people will lose their jobs, though many people will have lack in their home, but if we will believe God, if we can only be consistent in this season, I want to tell you something as the God, the angel came and walked in the furnace with Meshach, Abednego and Shadrach, he's going to walk with you in this day. And the flames of that furnace was hotter than normal, but it had no power over those that were consistent in their faith. And in this season, no matter how difficult things will get, if you are consistent, your business will be blessed, your job will be blessed, your family will be blessed, because God will be with you. Faithfulness, consistent in your faith. Because God will never leave us. God never left the season. Do you think when the coronavirus stepped into 2020, God decided, oh now I can't live here, I must go? No. He made a covenant to you. God has made a covenant to you. He said that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. No matter what you go through, no matter what situation you face, no matter how much you lose in this world, God said that he will never forsake you. We need to fall in love with Jesus again. We need to learn the basic of our faith that he will never leave us. Though we lose much in this world, but there's something that we can never lose, my brother and my sister. We can never lose the love of God. We can never lose the commitment and the covenant that this God has made with us. Our God has said that he will never leave us. And he will never leave you. You may be going through pain now. I don't know what your pain is. Maybe it's the loss of loved one. Maybe you lost your finances. Maybe you lost your house and you lost your car. I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult to not have what you want. But I want to tell you something. In the midst of that storm that you find yourself in, God is there. God is there. He can never, the world can steal your cars and it can steal your houses and it can steal your money. But it can never steal your God because his root is planted in your life. He said that I will be with you. Yea, until the end of time. He's not about to leave you because you lost your job. Just look unto him. He's there. In the book of Matthew chapter uh, 20. Uh, 28 from verse 19 when you when he speaks of the great commission and he told his disciples his last words to his disciples he said go into all the world and preach the gospel make disciples of me and baptize them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit and then he went on further and he said that the, the disciples went everywhere doing great plunders for him and he said lo i will be with you until the end of time you see, that's a statement. Let me read that because it's an important revelation. I want us to have a revelation. You see, the problem is we live in life from a sermon. We live in life from an anointed sermon. We must learn to live life from revelation. God must become real to you. He must become your God. And you must become His people. Then consistency will be buttered in your heart. You can't serve God because you heard a powerful sermon. You can't serve God effectively because of the anointed sermon. Or you got touched by an anointed servant of God. You must have a revelation of this God. He must become your God. And you must become His people. Though I have a thousand will fall by my side. But I will worship this God until the end of time. The world can steal everything from me. But it can never steal my consistency in the belief I have in my God. I will trust this God until the very end. If you take me to prison, I will preach him in the prison. If you take me to the cross, I will die for my God. I'm not about to let him go. Can you stand today in your life and say, God, I will go to the cross for you. And you know what you will find? God has no desire for you to suffer. When you get to that cross, you will find Him. If you will make a decision that you will be consistent in what you believe, 
And if you tell God that I will go wherever you tell me to go, when you get to that place, he will be there. That's what Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach said. They told the king, we will not bow before no other. We will trust our God. You want to send me to the furnace? Send me to the furnace. But I will die with my faith. I will not die inconsistent of my faith. When I enter heaven, if I'm meant to go home today, I'm going to go home strong and proud, believing in my God. Because I tell you something, there is something greater than your house and your car and your job and your business. There is something greater waiting for you. And it is called eternity. It is called heaven. And if you don't have a revelation of eternity, the lust of this world will steal your consistency in your faith. You see, it doesn't matter what I own. It doesn't matter what is taken from me. I know there will come a day when I will live. I will leave this world, my brother and sister. There are many things in this world that are subject to change. But there is something that no man and no woman can run from. And that is death. And one day, it will come and knock upon your door. And on that day, you will rise forevermore because of Jesus Christ. Because of the blood of the Lamb. It shall have no power over you. And in that day, you shall leave this world and you shall live for eternity. There is something greater to live for. There is something greater to trust God that is greater than the gold, the silver of this world. It is imperishable. Jesus said, do not put your hope in the things of this world because they will perish. I want to tell you something. There will come a day when your gold and your silver will be left behind and you will find yourself on the way to eternity. In that day, my brother and my sister, will you hear those words, those words well done? My good and faithful servant. That is a servant that was consistent. The problem is, if we stop living life with a sense of eternity tugging at our soul, we become inconsistent with our faith. Because we're forgetting what we are serving God for. You are not serving God for a house. You are not serving God for a business, for a good car. These are the fruits of your faithfulness. You are serving God because He is God. We are serving this God today because He is faithful to a thousand generations. We are serving Him because He is the God that was faithful to Abraham and He remains faithful to me this day. This is why I serve Him. This is why I bow my knees to Him. This is why I raise my hands in worship to Him. Not because of blessings. Because of His faithfulness. The blessings are the fruits of your consistency. The blessings are the fruits of your consistency in your trust and faith in God. The more you believe Him, the more you will see the miracles and the favor of God in your life. Are you getting a revelation today? Believe this God, trust Him. You know what? I see many people, I know we go through difficult times. I know we lose things. Things dear to us. Things that we liked. But in all that loss, God is there. You see, many great men of God, look at Elijah on Mount Carmel. In the midst of all the storm, God was there. God didn't leave Elijah. Though you may feel you're surrounded by turmoil, you're surrounded by, by unrighteousness, you're surrounded by lack and poverty. But it can have no power over you if you will trust God. You may not have what, your, what the Jones next door have. You may not have what your, your, your brother and sister next to you have. But you have what God has given you. 
Be grateful for that. Be grateful for the little that God has given you. Don't, don't compare the faithfulness of God by looking at your brother. That's what causes inconsistency in your faith. Look at the faithfulness of what God has given you, irrespective of what's going on with everyone else around you. And if you can live your life like that, you will see the faithfulness of God. And if you will live life like that, and one day you find yourself in a furnace, you can be sure that the angel of God will be there with you. But if we live life comparing to the Jones next door, you're going to live your whole life thinking that God has neglected you. Don't look for more. You see, that was the trick that Eve fell for. And Adam, Eve and Adam fell for. Is that God gave them a blessing. But the enemy came to give them what was God's. God told them, I give you... Are you all hearing what God is saying today? God told them that I will give you all authority over all the world. Over all the fishes and everything on the world. And the enemy came and told them, eat of the fruit and you will have, you'll become like God. God had, Adam and Eve had authority over everything. But God had authority over them. They wanted that authority. And what did it lead to? They started to, to doubt God. It birthed inconsistency in their trust in God. So every time you look with lust to someone else's blessing, someone else's anointing, you forfeit the treasures that God has for you. Are you all hearing what God is saying this morning? And these are the things that will trap you. When God spoke to Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1, you go read it at home. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 5. God spoke to Joshua and he said, you know what? These people, they gave Moses a hard time. If you're going to lead them into the promised land, you need to, have, you need to be grounded in my word. They, the, the, the wisdom that God gave Joshua, he told him, be strong and courageous. And meditate in my word day and night. And make sure that it does not depart from your heart. What God was telling Joshua. Remind yourself of my faithfulness. As I was with your father, I will be with you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. So the secret to your consistency in your faith lies in reminding yourself of the word of God. If you don't constantly remind yourself of the promises of God, the world will surely remind you of their promises. That is short-lived. Hallelujah. My brother and my sister, God is in your storm. This is what I'm trying to tell you today. God is in your storm. There is something greater to live for. I want to tell you today, don't live for the treasures of this world. Love for eternity. The church has forgotten these things. Because we don't preach it enough. We don't preach eternity. We don't preach that there is a life after this earth. We don't preach. And the more we preach eternity, the more we're going to get a revelation. That even though we have lost someone, we will see them again. Even though... We have lost these treasures, these temporary treasures on this world. We're going to get greater in heaven for eternity. Now we, we, we balance in 70 years on a scale of eternity. Where's the wisdom in that? We balance in 70 or 80 years on a scale of eternity. It doesn't even tip the scale. It doesn't even make a difference. So why do we make this lifetime, why don't we allow the storms of this life to forfeit the treasures of eternity? We have to become people of consistency in this day. That's what I hear the Lord say. And that's what he was telling Joshua. And he was saying, you meditate on the word of God day and night. So God was saying, remind yourself, remind yourself of my faithfulness. 
Whenever people come against you, whenever these Israelites don't believe you anymore, whenever your, your situation is not conducive to what you want, remind yourself of me. I'm the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. The Bible in the book of Hebrews says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The God that was with Elijah on Mount Carmel is your God that will stand before you today. The God that was with his disciples is the God that is with you here today. You must never forget that. The God that was with Moses at the Red Sea when Moses lifted that rod, he is here with you today. You just need to turn to him. You just need to trust him. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. This is the God we serve in today. We are serving Jehovah El Shaddai, the almighty God. We are serving Jehovah El Elon, the most high God. We are serving Jehovah Shamam, the ever present God. We are serving Jehovah Jireh, our provider. This is the God that we serve. When I speak of this God, I get excited because then I know that this world has no power over me. I want to tell you something. On the first, oh, shaka, Laura, no, I'm going to jump off the stage now. I just somehow want to jump off the stage because I'm so excited. I got a revelation of God. I just realized <laughs> that the storms of this world cannot change my destiny. I just realized that even if I lose my job today, God will give me another job. I just realized even if my business goes down today, the God that has built that business will surely build it again. I had a revelation. Do you have a revelation this day? Do you have a revelation of God? We need to live by revelation. You have to have a conviction in your soul of this God that you are serving. And then will rise a generation that will plunder this world for the glory of God. I want to tell you something. We need the church of Jesus Christ. Not y'all. Y'all are consistent. Y'all are the, um, <laughs> the corona consistent believers. <laughs> because y'all are sitting in church. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters that are not in church. We need the church to become consistent in their faithfulness with God. Because God is faithful. If the church, I believe with all my heart, in the next year, the word of the Lord, three months, I give my people. And in these three months, decisions shall be made in your life and in your heart, in your family, your businesses, your jobs. And these decisions do not take lightly, says the Lord. For these decisions shall determine your position in the will of God in this coming season. For surely this period of peace shall be a period short lived. Do not be fooled. The storm is not over. gandola brunda karushendela. The storm is not over. What is coming is far worse, says the Lord. The decisions that we make in this day will determine our position in the plan and purpose of God in the new year. Hear the word of the Lord. We need to make a stand today. And we need to tell this world that we will not be like the generation that came after Joshua that forgotten the God of miracles. Let us shout on the mountaintop of the faithfulness of our God. Let us go into our businesses. Let us go into our homes. Let us speak to these walls and the atmosphere of our home. And we say, yes, our God is faithful. Let us walk into our communities and say, God is faithful. You walk into your home and you say, my God is faithful. He will take us through this thing. Hallelujah. We need to praise God. We need to worship God in a time such as this. Hallelujah. 
I think I'm going to stop there. The faithfulness of God. I want to read the, the, the scripture that I started with in Deuteron Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. Chapter 7. I want you to take this with you. And don't forget what I'm about to tell you. Therefore know that the Lord your God. He is God. The faithful God. Who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. With those who love him and keep his commandments. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God. He alone is God. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the earth. He alone is God. No one goes to the father, but through Jesus Christ. And he is faithful. And he keeps his covenant of mercy for a thousand generations to those that will love him and those that will keep his commandments. We serve a faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a faithful God. We serve a faithful God. And he will never leave you. Though you lose many things on this earth. Though you will lose many loved ones. Because all will go through the doors of death. But not will be those that will rise again. Hallelujah. And we are those. Our loved ones of God is not of the seek eternity. That's what Jesus was telling him. Seek eternity. Seek my kingdom. And all these other things that you desire shall be given unto you. These are the fruits. We live our whole life serving for fruit. When are we going to get our blessings? Seek God with all that you are. Live for eternity. Live with a sense of eternity. Tugging at your soul. Every decision you make, make it be an eternal decision. And all the treasures of this world shall follow you. That's why when, when Solomon asked, uh, told God, I don't want all of this. I just want wisdom to lead your people. You are seeking the kingdom of God. God said, because you have chosen correctly, I will give you all the gold and all the silver of this world. And when God gave him that, the Bible says it was more than the land could ever have. Bronze had no silver. Leave bronze. Silver had no value in the days of Solomon to a man that chose eternity over the treasures of this world. My brother and my sister, we're going to take communion right now. And when we're taking communion, we are making a statement to this world that our hope and our trust lies in our God. We live. What is, the, what is communion? Has everyone got the communion cup? Amen. If you don't have it, just raise your hands and the ushers will know to come to you. There's a few hands being raised. Guys, if you can just help them. The communion cup taken off the table of the Lord is not a natural thing. It's a supernatural thing. It's saying that me and my house, we will live for eternity. When I'm taking off this cup, I'm saying to this world, <laughs> do whatever you want. But I am a partaker of eternity. That's what communion is about. You're laughing at the storms of this world. And you're telling the storms of this world, do whatever you want. But this cup and this bread gives me the right to eternity, which you can never take. That is the power of the communion table that we are taking today. We are making a statement of our consistent God. That will love us until the end of time. Hallelujah. And we're telling that mountain that stands before you. You can stand. You can be there for as long as you want. But there will come, <laughs> there will come a day. 
when even you, O mountain, will remain on this earth, but I will be gone to eternity. You telling your Goliath, oh Goliath, you think you are so strong, but there will come a day when even you will be left upon this earth to burn in hell, but I will go to live with my God for eternity. Oh, you spirit of darkness. Oh, I hear people talk about this spirit and that spirit and this demon and that demon. I want to tell you something this morning. When I'm taking communion, I'm making a statement to every demon, every stronghold of the enemy. You can rage your war, but there will come a day when I will leave you behind. You have no right where I am going. You don't know that way. Only I know that way. And it is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you getting a revelation this morning? You may not have a Porsche 911 in your garage. You may not live in Santon. But I tell you something. You are holding the greatest treasure the world can ever offer you. is salvation. You hold on to that treasure. It is worth more than all the gold and all the silver of this world. It is worth more than all the cars and houses of this world. It is eternity. And it is yours. It is yours. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you, my brother and sister. He died that there will come a day when death will have no power over you. This is why we are, have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. It's not because we have all that our heart desires. It is because we are the sons and daughters of God. And if, I, and if it is God's will that I go home today, I know that death has no sting over my soul. I am a blessed, blood-washed child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. You online, just get ready to take communion with us. We're going to take communion all over the world, any country that people are watching. Come on, you're going to take communion. We are children of God. For those that are new, and never use those communion cups. The, you peel the white tape on the top. And you access the biscuit. And when you peel the red tape. You access the juice. Okay. So let us hold the biscuit in our hand. That represents. I want to tell you there is no power in this biscuit. As I tell you. You can use anything. But. The significance of it. Is that we are telling this world we are different we partake of a different table we partake of the table of the lord in the midst of our enemies hallelujah so lord we thank you lord for your faithfulness lord that you have left the realms of eternity to walk the earth as a man to be tempted as we were tempted but you redeemed us lord you took the stripes for us you took all the pain of this world, all the sin of this world upon your body so that I may live for eternity, Lord. And as we eat of this this morning, we acknowledge that we are not of this world, but we are of your kingdom. And we will trust you until the end of time. If you believe that, take of this. Just peel the red Tape, access to juice. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we are not redeemed through perishable things like silver and gold. But we are redeemed through the blood of Jesus. The Lamb of God that was slain for our sins. And it's your blood that gives us a right into eternity. And we trust you and we believe and we acknowledge our inheritance today. And no longer shall we look upon the earth. But we shall be consistent in our walk with you, O Lord. If you believe that, you take of it. Lord, we bless you. And I thank you, Lord. Though I may lose all that this world has. Lord, I will love you. And I will worship you with every breath that I breathe, Lord. Because I know that when I leave the earth, I come to you, Lord. 
For your word declares, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And I thank you that the world has no power over it. And there will come a day when I will leave this world behind. I thank you for eternity. And I serve you with all that I am. And I will trust you. As for me and my house, we will serve you with all that we are. Lord, as long as I have authority over my children, I will lead them in the statues of the kingdom of God. I will teach them how to pray. I will teach them of the faithfulness of my God. Lord, I will tell my children of my God. That they will tell their children of my God. That they will tell their grandchildren of the God of their grandfather. Lord, may my faithfulness in this generation, may it not die with me and my wife, O oh God. But may my children's children's children know the faithfulness of our serving of our God in our generation. Lord, we will serve you with all that we are. We ask that you will go into our children's generation, into our grandchildren's generation, into our great-grandchildren's generation, if the earth will be, and bless them, Lord. And may they know and bring to their remembrance, as you brought to the remembrance of Isaac, and told him that you are the God of his father, Abraham. And when you met Jacob, you said that you are the God of Abraham and Isaac. And when you met Moses in the desert, you said that you were the God of his fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Lord, visit our children, Lord. Visit our great-grandchildren. And tell them who you are. That you are the God of their great-grandfather and their great-grandmother. Oh Lord, we love you and we worship you with all that we are. In Jesus' name. Lord, I bless you each and every person in this place i bless our viewers online and i release them in the glory and in the power of the holy spirit oh god keep them in all their ways and lead them by the might and the power of your holy spirit in jesus name hallelujah i just want to say goodbye to everyone online may the lord keep you in all your ways and may you just share share the message to a friend Share it as much as possible and let the body of Christ remember the faithfulness of their God in this hour. Hallelujah. We bless you and we release you. We see you on Wednesday night at 7 to 8 for our hour of prayer soaking in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah.